Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a fun video for you. At least I think you're gonna have fun and you're probably going to do a lot of laughing at my expense, but that's okay. I'm gonna be taking you through the journey that my hair has been on since I was a little girl till now. I get a lot of questions about what my hair looked like or how long it was before I had a pixie cut. Many of you wanna know if I ever had dark hair or platinum blonde hair or whatever. So I thought it would be fun to go back through a bunch of my photo albums and piece together a little hair journey for you. Now I did something similar to this on my blog maybe about 10 years ago or so, but I know many of you have probably not seen that and I went through and found some additional photos that I think will be fun. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and now let's get started. So as early as I can remember, I loved having curls in my hair. And when I was really little, young, I had blonde hair, pretty bright blonde hair naturally. And my mom would usually curl my hair. Typically, I slept on rollers at night. And I started off with no bangs, you know how that goes. And then as I got a little bit older, I started realizing that, oh, if you braided your hair, you could create these kind of waves or slept on rollers, you could get more curls. So I did that for a number of years. And then it was around, I think, fifth grade or so, I got my first perm. Oh, yes. Yes, we say that word and we all go, oh, right? <laughs> but it was the thing, right? And with long hair, because my hair was growing longer and I really wanted long, long hair, but with long hair, it would weigh out the curl. So any curl that I would put in by the end of the day, it would be, you know, almost straight. So a perm definitely helped with that. So when I got this first perm, I would still then curl my hair at night, sleep on rollers, but the curls, you know, were really kinky. I started with bangs, I think around fourth, fifth grade. And then I think it was about sixth grade. I noticed some of the older girls were doing this hairstyle. <laughs> this hairstyle had the bangs that started here and went in a V to the crown of the head. Do you all remember that style? And then the rest of it was long. Yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. It was not a good look. But, you know, I thought I was cool because I was like the high school girl. So I kept that style for about a year. Then I started growing out the back portion of bangs and kind of did a little softer look. And then the really big hair of the late 80s really came in and early 90s. And whoa, did I embrace that. Um, these next couple pictures, you will see my perms got frizzier and my bangs got bigger. Oh my goodness, but I thought I was pretty cool. We would be in the bathroom after class, you know, spraying on more Aquanet hairspray to really make sure those bangs stay put. Wow. Then thankfully, I kind of dialed back. I was still getting perms, but I had my mom use larger rollers. So she was my beautician for all this time. She would trim my hair. She gave me all my perms and she would do piggyback. So it was two rollers per strand. My hair was getting longer, but I was liking more of that looser curled look. Then around my senior year, it was still curls, but it was big, big hair. So I still wanted that volume. Still kind of had a little height in the bangs. And then towards the end of my senior year, I decided I wanted to chop off my hair. I wanted to do something drastic at the end of my senior year. And so I chopped off my hair at shoulder length, kind of did the bob thing, and it was pretty much just one length with bangs. And I enjoyed that look. I thought, you know, I was pretty grown up but then decided kind of through the next couple years, I would have these times where I would grow it out, cut it off, grow it up. So I did start growing it out and it started growing longer and faster than it ever had. And so my hair got down to basically my waist. I did have lots of layers put in and I do think I was still maybe getting a loose perm for a little bit 
just to help hold curl, but I was using hot rollers or still sleeping on those big old pink rollers. So, and then I was noticing because I wasn't spending as much time outside that my hair stopped getting that bright blonde that it used to be. So I thought I'm going to take matters into my own hands and I'm going to dye my hair blonde. Well, as we all know now, that dark hair and you put blonde over it, you know, it usually turns a nice shade of like orange, strawberry blonde maybe is what we'll call it. So I did end up having to go to a beautician to have her kind of tone it down just a little. And then a couple months later, had a terrible heartbreak, you know, and decided, okay, I'm gonna just drastically change my hair. And so over Christmas break, I dyed my hair again. Yep, I decided to try it again. I went dark. And this was pretty close to what my natural color was at that time, but I went all dark and <laughs> people were like, who are you? Because it was so drastically different. But again, my hair was super long all the way down to my waist. And I did enjoy curling it and putting it up often. I would do twists and braids and lots of different things. So I was always doing that. But I started just feeling like, you know what? I want another drastic change. So I decided to chop off my hair again, but I went kind of just a little below my shoulder, long layers, and I was always in this quandary of what to do with my bangs. A lot of my friends kind of went with the no bang look, but I never really loved that look on myself. Well, once you cut off your hair, you know, you kind of get braver and you're like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go a little shorter. I'm gonna go a little shorter. So I did end up going above my shoulders and I actually really liked this style. I did, however, still have to straighten it out with a large curling iron. Now this was before we had really good flat irons. So I was using those huge curling irons just to kind of help straighten out my hair. And then I met my husband when my hair was around that length and I started growing it out a little bit longer because I knew I wanted to do kind of an updo for my wedding. So I started growing it out and my mother-in-law let me know that she thought that you know, men always wanted women with longer hair. And so I kind of thought, oh, she must know that her son wants longer hair. And so I kind of started growing my hair out just a little bit. I thought, well, we'll add a little length to it. So I let it grow, kept the layers, and then we moved to Southern California. And my first summer here, it was so hot. I remember a few days over 110 and I thought, I'm just wearing my hair up in a ponytail all the time. And it had gotten pretty long by then. So I thought the next time we go back to Denver, because that was where my hairstylist, who was my cousin, she was my stylist at the time and she was the only one I would trust to do these drastic cuts. So I thought, okay, next time we're in Denver, I'll have her chop my hair off. And so the initial time I had her chop it off, I went like right below my jawline. And my husband wasn't like a super big fan of this cut. I thought it was kind of fun. It was a little flippy, but it wasn't quite right. It was either too short or too long. You know, I couldn't really pull up the sides very well because I had all these layers come out. So I kind of started growing it out again a little bit. And then the next year when we were in Denver, I really got the itch to really go short. I had always loved Meg Ryan's hair in You've Got Mail. And my best friend had two. And so she was kind of wanting a little bit of a change too. And so she said, I'll go with you. I'll get my hair cut short if you do it. So we found this picture in a magazine and decided to go to my cousin and have her give us this haircut. And I was quite shocked. I was really scared at first because I had never had this part of my hair that short. So initially I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it. And also I kept kind of going more with my darker hair color. And then I decided I kind of wanted a little bit of some highlights in there. And then I found my current hairstylist and she really helped me kind of tweak 
the style and I went a little shorter, more layered. This was around the time when I started my YouTube channel and many of you were drawn to my hair back then because it was different, kind of edgy and spiky and I really enjoyed that cut. Now, once I went to this shorter style, I for quite a long time kind of kept the styling pretty much the same because it was so quick and easy. I would style it the same and go. Well, then I started going, you know, let's see if we can do some different styles with the short hair. And so I started flipping my hair over to the other side and I was like, oh, that gives it like a whole new look. And then I started having a little more fun. I even did a video of 28 days of different styles with my hair when it was in the longer style. And that really inspired me to continue styling my hair in different ways. Even though it was short, there's still a lot of versatility that you can do with styling. So then after a number of years with that style and so many of you saying, Shirley, try this, Shirley, try this. I decided because I had been wearing my hair kind of tucked behind my ears so much and I was enjoying having that back kind of a little bit flatter more often, I thought, you know, if I shaved the sides, it wouldn't be that different than me wearing it tucked behind my ears, right? So my stylist being such a wonderful patient stylist that she is, she helped me through this process. So the first step to getting to this cut I did was I had her shave the sides. I did not have her shave any of this in the back. She just did the sides and I did a video of it and I took a screenshot of my face when she pulled out the clippers and it is priceless. I mean, I was scared to death and I'm like, it's just hair, you know, but I was clinging really tightly to my hair, but let her cut the sides. And by the next time I thought, you know what? I think I'm ready to cut the back. And so I remember the first time, I think I had her shave maybe about this portion. She did maybe a number four clippers. So it was not as short as what I have now. And I remember that night going out to walk my dog and I felt the cold air on my neck and thought, what have I done? Oh my word, I've got to grow it out. And then about a week went by and I started getting a lot of compliments from people that I'd never heard from before at the gym. They're like, oh, that's really cool. It looks awesome. And I'm like, all right, I think I can do this. So from there, my style just continued to evolve. And my stylist is one that loves a challenge. She loves to change things up. So I am frequently sitting in her chair with multiple pictures from Pinterest saying, hey, what if we change this up? What if we do that? So some of you might have noticed even from the front view that my style is a slightly shorter. It looks a little different today. And that's because I did have her change it up slightly, but I did have her go even shorter down here. So she did kind of a two here and then almost basically like a one around the edge. And then I also had her bring up the edge slightly because I was like, you know, why am I clinging to hair here? Because you can't see it from the front anyway. Around the edge here, she also did a two. So it's a little bit shorter. So as I was looking back through my journey I, from long hair to short, it's been fun. It's been fun to look at the journey. It's been fun to get back in my frame of thinking back in those days when I was considering each hairstyle change, like what was going through my brain. But I just hope that this video inspires some of you who maybe who have been hesitant to go with short hair. Maybe you've had long hair your whole life. And ironically, once I went even to my longer pixie style, my husband has not wanted me to grow it out. I offer every couple of years, I'm like, do you want me to grow my hair out? And he's like, no. <laughs> so I think because it's easy to style and it's just different than many styles out there today. So now something else you may have picked up on seeing some of my earlier pictures 
is something that many of you have said to me. You've said, oh, I have a fuller face, I can't do short hair. Well, as you were looking back through many of my pictures, especially when I had longer hair, I had really full cheeks for most of my life, and I still do. And thank the Lord for things like contouring, right? Because that really does make a difference. But I hope that you've seen through the pictures that oddly enough, my short hair, because it creates all these different angles, I feel like that helps break up a round face. When I had long hair and I wore it up, it was kind of like all you saw was face with a little bangs and there wasn't a lot of interest. There weren't a lot of ways to add angles. So for those of you who thought that you can't pull off short hair because you have a round face or a fuller face, hopefully today's video will show you that you can indeed pull this off. So I hope that this video was fun for you and inspiring. If any of you have been hesitant to take the plunge and do something drastic, I hope that this video gives you inspiration to do that. After all, it's just hair. If you dye it, you can always dye it again. If it's too short, you can always grow it out, but at least you'll say you tried and had some fun while doing it, right? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.